The appointed hour of six o'clock having been reached, I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge, I'm ZBA Chair. I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or telephone. No in-person attendance of the meeting will meet, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting recordings may be viewed on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel, as well as the ZBA webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with a roll call of the ZBA members and panel for tonight's meeting. Steve Judge, present. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Mr. Gilbert? Here. Ms. Marshall? Here. Also attending the public hearing tonight is Maureen Pollock, planner for the town, and Rob Mora, building commissioner. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will be asked questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits. The board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file the decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of the filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day appeal period for the aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, uh, ZBA FY 2023, Mohammed Malkin, uh, public meeting, Mohammed Malin Kanais to request the appeal under section 11.42 of the building commissioner's decision of a notice of violation under sections 11.45 and 12.172 of the zoning bylaw located at 25 Nutting Avenue, map 11C, parcel 104, general residence, RG zoning district. ZBA FY 2023-08, Johnny Ben Tran and David Heinup Tran for the review and approval of the updated management plan submitted by the prospective buyer pursuant to condition six from the approved special permit ZBA FY 2018-04 and to transfer the special permit to Rajid Jog subject to the purchase and sale located at 320 West Street, map 20A, parcel 103, neighborhood residence, RN zoning district and a public hearing on ZBA FY 2023-04, Redwood Construction, Inc. requests a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit 
ZBA FY 2018-21 for the proposed modifications to conditions 1, 6, 11, 12, 19, which is condition 4, condition 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, among possible others, as they relate to proposed changes to the site plan, site amenities, building plan, and management plan under section 10.33 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at Renew Amherst 266 East Hadley Road, map 16D, parcel 13, neighborhood residential RN zoning district. This is continued from our October 13th, 2022 meeting. After that, there'll be general, our general public comment period for matters not before the board tonight and other business not anticipated within the last 40, uh, before the, prior to the last 48 hours. Are there any disclosures regarding tonight's agenda? The first order of business is FY 2023-07, Muhammad Mal, excuse me, I'm butchering his name, Malin Kanais, to request an appeal under section 111.42 of the building commissioner's decision of a notice of violation under section 11.45, 12.172 of the zoning bylaw located at 25 Nutting Avenue, map 11C, parcel 104, general residence, RG zoning district. We have received a letter from Mr. Seiko Esquire representing the appellant or the at yeah, the appellant requesting a continuance of this matter until the first ZBA meeting in January. The application has requested the applicant has requested a continuation of this matter to our January meeting. The reason for the request for the continuation is that there is some litigation pending under regular procedures. The board is required to hold its meeting within 65 days and make a decision within 100 days of filing with the town clerk an appeal for an appeal of the decision of the building commissioners. Those time limits will be exceeded during this litigation. Neither the building commissioner nor the town objects to the continuation. My recommendation is that we approve the request for a continuation until our first meeting, until our meeting in January, we have to decide that date. And since today we are only dealing with a procedural matter, I see no reason to discuss the merits of the appeal at this time. So I would entertain a motion to continue this matter to our first January meeting, to our January meeting, either the 13th or the 26th, which we can decide tonight, and to authorize the staff to memorialize that decision through a letter back to the appellant's representative, Mr. Seiko. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Maxfield, Ms. Marshall seconds. Sure. Now we can, we can discuss the motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. uh, Attorney Sacco uh, is in um, attendance is he, and he's raised. Oh, his I didn't hand. see him. Uh, I am. Great. All right. Um, I, honestly, I don't have anything to add. Uh, just to let you know that uh, I, I think we'll have the entire matter resolved by January. So we'd appreciate that uh, January date and hopefully I'll be withdrawing the appeal. Thank you. Uh, the one reason I'm asking the staff to memorialize this is that it requires the bylaws, our operating bylaws require that there be uh, a memorialization of this in writing. And even though the letter from Mr. Seiko has um, indicated their desire to do that, it doesn't necessarily follow that the town has approved it. So a letter back would be a written agreement and memorialization of that. So this motion would be to approve the, the continuation. I think the discussion should be what the date is. Our meetings for January are the 13th and the 26th. Um, given the 13th is close to some. Yes, Ms. Marshall. I believe the 12th and the 26th. The 12th and the 26th. Okay. Uh, the 12th and the 26th. Um, members of the board have a preference for either date. Will you be in town on the 13th? 12th. Um, Excuse me, on the 12th, yes. <laughs> Ms. Marshall, will you be in town on the 12th? Yes. Ms. Parks, do you think you can be in town on the 12th? Mr. Gilbert, will you be in town on the 12th? I believe so. All right, and Mr. Maxfield? I can do it. I will as well. So we will continue this meeting, uh, this matter until the 12th. At um, six o'clock. At the meeting, at we'll start via Zoom. <laughs> Ms. Parks. 
would the attorney prefer that we pick the further date in January? Um, thank you for asking. I, honestly, I, I I have an agreement right now in part in principle with the parties that the the, the relevant uh, occupants will be vacating December thirty first. I think maybe the the later date might be a safer thing, but I'm okay with the twelfth. So I'll really I'll leave it to your discretion. Um, I I expect this to go pretty smoothly, but you know my expectations have been dashed in the past. So, <laughs> so. well, let's not. So let's make it safe. You know, let's let's make it safe. And um, given that you never know what happens over the holidays, so I'll amend my motion to the twenty sixth. Then, um, has, does that change anybody's ability to attend? I better check. I only check myself for the for the uh, actually the thirteenth, but <laughs> I'll check myself for the twenty sixth as well. And so far, so good. All right. Great. So the motion before, unless there's any further discussion, um, the motion before the committee is to continue this to the 26th of January, 2023 at six o'clock via Zoom. Um, it's a roll call vote. If there's no further discussion, the roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Okay. All right, we'll see you on the 26th, Mr. Seiko. Uh, thank you. Hopefully not, but <laughs> well, <laughs> have, a great, have a great holiday season. You, you said that I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. The second order of business is ZBA FY 2023-08. Johnny Bin Tron and David Hunyak Tron for the review and approval of the, of the updated management plan submitted by the prospective buyer pursuant to condition six from the approved special permit ZBA FY 2018-04 and to transfer the special permit to Rajiv Jog, subject to the purchase and sale, located at 320 West Street, map 20A, parcel 103, neighborhood residential district, RN zoning district. We have received one submission regarding this application. Mr. Z Huang, who is the owner of My Group LLC, the company that has been and has been and will continue to manage the property, submitted a new management plan pursuant to the requirements of Section 6 of the special permit. Is there a representative of the applicant who wishes to speak? Oh, um, my name is Z. I'm here uh, attending the meeting today. Yep. Okay. I think Rajiv is in the call as well, but I think he's just an uh, attendee. Okay. Mr. Uh, Wong, would you like to um, present anything on this or is this pretty straightforward? It's pretty straightforward. We're keeping everything as is, as the same, uh, just transferring it to the new owners. Um, so this is um, the, our purchase sales agreement. is actually contingent upon um, the name being switched over to Rajiv, the new prospective buyer. Um, after that, I mean, everything is pretty straightforward and we're just continuing everything as is. As I reviewed the management plan, the only change I noticed was the new owner. Is that correct? Yes, and then um, also the only change that was really in there was the landscaping company. They changed their name. Yeah, that's then, cool. um, yeah. Another From Crossman to something else. Yeah. yeah. And then another uh, one was a trash bin. Instead of uh, Amherst Trucking, it's now USA Waste. And that's the only okay. two changes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Um, as present? of the no. management plan, the new one? No, there isn't. Is there any questions from members of the board regarding this? All right, Ms. Marshall. Also, not a, excuse me, not a question, but um, if the sale for some reason does not go through, I assume you would still want to make these changes to the management plan, the, the changes in company names that your contractors. Yes, that most likely, yes. Yeah. But um, we are actually, we extended our closing for this, um, uh, meeting as well. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Um, Ms. Pollock. I just, I just wanted to clarify, I, I guess, a slight error on my part in the um, public meeting listing. So the permit holder is Johnny Bing Tran and David Hunang uh, Tran. Um, and I say uh, part of the request to transfer the special permit to the prospective buyer. 
uh, Jia Ving Zhang, um, subject to the purchase and sale. Um, since this is a public meeting, I don't believe that you would be handling that. You um, and so it would just run with the land. So the permit holder would still be the trans, but it would extend over to the new owners. But if in the future they need to amend their special permit, they could transfer it to a new name. I think perhaps Rob could clarify that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, for one, did not understand that. Understand. At all. Right. <laughs> so, so the current Rob owner just... is um, is uh, Z. Who yep. can James? Well, I actually have the public James meeting Wong. here. I could show you on the, my camera if you like. <clears throat> we did the meeting i think it was in uh, 2019 we yes have, yep. we have there here his name is james yep. wong we yes. transferred the um, special permit to his name and then i i think it was just always uh, when we checked with our attorney during the time was david barrison at uh, wilson bacon and wilson um <clears throat> he told us that this will, was all that we needed to do regarding the um public meeting regarding the switching the prior owner to the current owner <clears throat> And then now we're switching from the current owner to the new buyers, which is Rajiv Jog. But um, <clears throat> when we were, uh, the lawyer told us that <clears throat> the permit will always be the original applicant's name. Is that correct? Yeah. Mr. Mora, can you clarify this for me anyway? Sure. Yeah, and I think that's exactly correct. So the the original permit doesn't change. It's not amended to replace the names of the original owner with. <clears throat> current owner or prospective buyer. So, um, and this isn't filed under the transfer provisions of the bylaw. So it, it, it is just heard under condition six of that original special permit to accept the management plan and, and acknowledgement of the new owner and their uh, management firm. And, and it will produce a, uh, a summary similar to what Z was just holding up another updated uh, document just like that with today's information on it. Good. All right. So it looks to me like everything is by the book. Um, unless there's any other discussion, I would entertain a motion to approve the management plan for condition six. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? There's no further discussion. The vote occurs on the motion. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Motion uh, is unanimous. It carries. Congratulations. You guys have your amended management plan approved. Yep. Thank you. Good luck. Yep. Thank you. Have a good holiday. You too. Um, before we start the next order of business, I just want to announce that we'll, if it extends in time to be, it looks like it's going to be a long meeting, we will take a break about 7.30 just to give everybody a chance to stand up and move around and get a glass of water. Um, and we've been doing that more recently in our meetings, and I, I like that. We're going to continue to do that if it looks to be a long meeting. So the next order of business is a public hearing on ZBA 2023-04, Redwood Construction, Inc., requesting a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2018-21 for the proposed modifications to conditions, conditions 1, 6, 11, 12, 19, condition 4, 21, 22, 23, 25, 28, among possible others, as they relate to the proposed changes to the site plan, site amenities, building plans, and management plan under section 10.33 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at Renew Amherst 266 East Hadley Road, map 16D, parcel 13, neighborhood residential RN zoning district. This is continued from our October 13th meeting. So first I'm gonna go through the submissions we've received. For those of you on the board, the new submissions are in bold red uh, type. 
the new submissions include an email from Tyler White to the planning staff dated October 28th. Um, number 33, renew Amherst Management Plan Addendum, revised date October 28th, 2022. An email from Tyler White to planning staff dated October 28th. Um, a project, ap project application report dated November 2nd. An email from planner uh, Maureen Pollock to the applicant dated October 18th. I think those are the extent of the submission, the new submissions since October meeting. Is that right, Maureen? Did I miss any? I believe that is it. What about the emails you just forwarded? Well, the, the, oh, well, sure. the, yes, that, that's right. The email uh, thread this afternoon containing communications between uh, Attorney Reedy and uh, Captain Ting of the Amherst Police. Um, so we've already approved numerous conditions on this application and we've done a lot of the work already. There's, I think there's quite frankly, just a few issues outstanding um, that we have to go through, of course, and you know, board members are more than um, permitted to ask questions about any, app, any matter on the application, but I'd like to focus, if we can, on the outstanding issues and some of the questions we asked of the applicant to su of submission of materials. And that involves, since the last time we all met, parking and EV stations, snow removal plans, security procedures, including on-site security guards, job descriptions and schedules for when Redwood construction personnel or their agents are actually on the property site, outreach to residents regarding a community group, uh, outreach to residents and community groups regarding a community garden on the site. Those are the ones that I think that we've asked for uh, responses from the applicant on and have gotten some responses back. Um, Mr. Reedy, are you representing the applicant? I am, Mr. Chair. Would you like to make a presentation about those items that are still being considered? Yeah, we'd love to. Um, okay. So for the, for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson here in Amherst here on behalf of Redwood Construction and its application for modification of their special permit with me, Tyler White from Redwood, Redwood Construction and also Carlos Nieto from Berkshire Design um, who's handled the, the site planning for this site. So yeah, Mr. Chair, as you've noted and, and hopefully we're completed before the 7.30 break. Um, you know, I think Ms. Pollock, as always, did a wonderful job uh, in her project application report, identifying the items that were brought up at that September 22nd hearing, and then the applicant's responses, and then even further, those the additional information that was requested, and then the, the responses that were provided. So it's probably simplest just to turn right to that project application report. And if you know, I've got Tyler here with me and Carlos. So if I don't give you a sufficient answer or you ask if you need more meat on the bones, ask and, and we'll have the answer for you. So, um, you know, with that, I'll I'll turn over to the, the list, so-called. Uh, so the first one was tenant demographics. And so I understand that there was a request from the Zoning Board of Appeals about what is the breakdown of, of folks with children, without children at the site, as I understood it, which may inform the amenities on the site. And so um, Renew came back with their response that with uh, the number of units with school age children under 18 years of age is 62 units of the 182. And the number of units without school age children under 18 is 120 units of the 182 units. And so you know, obviously there's um, double the amount without children under 18 than with um, children under 18. The next, and, and we can pause at any, any point, but the next one is about the community garden. And so it was um, kind of a couple of fold and this, this will bleed into some of the information that was recently provided in October. Um, confirm the size area of the community garden. Uh, if guidance is needed to help create and manage the community garden, uh, we are encouraged to talk to Healthy Hampshire. So the response is, um, there's an updated site plan and the community garden is 58 feet by 31 feet in dimension, which is approximately same the same size as the community gardens approved in 2018-21, um, which is with the previous owner. It's comprised of 16 total planting beds each 
uh, 32 square feet, four by eight in dimension with three foot rows in between. In addition, two composting areas will be provided in the garden. Water will be piped to a spigot at the garden and residents will, will be required to use their own tools for planting. Um, the applicant had reached out to Healthy Hampshire and we're awaiting response as an update. If you go to on that project application report, the third red bullet point, <clears throat> there was an email from Tyler um, from Healthy Hampshire uh, really just saying that that um, uh, Renew wanted to provide an update on the community garden plan. They met with Clark Bankert from Healthy Hampshire on October 20th and had a good discussion about the project. Clark oversees the Healthy Hampshire program and Renew is in discussions with her on partnering to develop the garden design and management policies. And then we will continue to stay in touch with her and we can obviously provide the planning department an update um, as the partnership is formulated. So seems like good, I mean, the, the communication has been made. There's good faith efforts um, that are being undertaken. And I know that there's, um, I think a condition to that end that Ms. Pollock had drafted that seems acceptable um, to renew. So that's, that's the community garden piece. The next one is the snow storage areas. <clears throat> So Shumway Services provides the snow service. They use a mixture of salt and sand for snow removal. They don't use chemicals uh, in the process. Um, they reference the management plan and then under the revised management plan, I think revised as of October 28th, which goes again to the, to the red um, uh, text that uh, Ms. Pollock had added. There was a little bit of clarification in the management plan itself. So uh, Renew hires an outside snow removal company to plow the driveways, parking lots, and roadways. All sidewalks, unit entrances, dumpster areas, fire escape routes, and fire hydrants are also cleared. Snow banks will be maintained so that they do not pose a danger to pedestrians or vehicles and do not limit emergency vehicle access to the buildings. The main roadway is kept free and clear of snow or other obstacles and is a priority for snow removal after each storm, as you'd expect. Snow removal contractor clears the snow once two inches have accumulated. If the snow begins to accumulate to the point that it cannot be contained on site, it will be relocated off site, so removed from the site. <clears throat> roadway salting is done before, during, and after storms. In addition, uh, tenants are asked to move their vehicles after each storm to allow for safe snow removal. And the maintenance staff is also responsible for salting and shoveling the, the walkways through the complex. Um, and I think you had, after that September 22nd meeting, received an updated site plan um, showing plants replaced that had some salt sensitivity. And so mm -hmm. all the plants shown um, on that plan are salt and sand tolerant. And most of the American hornbeam trees have been replaced with thornless honey locust trees. And most of the American red maples have been replaced with red oaks, while the hornbeams and pink flowering dogwoods, um, while beautiful, have been replaced altogether with sergeant cherry trees. So that's their response to the, the snow storage, snow removal piece. Um, and as I stated, that's part of the management plan. So a, an approval would include that uh, management plan. And so if, if the snow got to be too much, it would have to be relocated from the site. Um, the next one is about EV charging station. And the request is to update the site plan uh, to show an EV, the EV charging station located in a nine by 18 foot parking space with an adjacent five foot wide clear aisle, which is what's required. And so the response is that the EV charging station has been relocated to accommodate a five foot wide clear aisle as requested. And then there was a screenshot um, with the updated site plan showing that five foot um, area uh, available next to the EV charging station. Uh, on-site staff. Um, so confirm on all on-site staffing roles and work hours per day provided. And so on-site staffing roles, this is the applicant response, including property manager, facilities manager, leasing consultant and facilities technician. Each of these employees uh, work Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. In addition, the leasing consultant works each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and, and this 
this is in the management plan. They go through and identify property manager roles and responsibility, regional manager roles and responsibility, facilities manager roles and responsibility, facilities technician, leasing consultant. And then there's on-call services for emergency issues, lockouts, and other urgent requests that are available 24-7. Um, and so that last one hits the second bullet point of the red text that Ms. Pollock had asked for. And then the last piece that I think we want to talk about is probably the email that that I had submitted today. I, I had a conversation with Captain Ting. Um, we had provided him some information, and then frankly, he just we, we spoke today. And you know, he said he he wasn't wedded to he wasn't you know that 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. Um, wasn't something that he thought was required. Instead, he said you know we can start with surveillance cameras and communication, because it seemed like if you had if you had read the email, and I'm happy to read it into the record if you need to, but I don't want to bore everybody. It seems like he has been impressed with what Renew has done as far as on-site staff, tenant selection, um, and really, I think, communication with the tenants. And, and that's, uh, you know, I'm here before you often, and it really is about tenant selection, communication with the tenants, um, an enforceable lease, setting expectations, and then following through with those expectations. And I think Captain Ting had seen uh, changes over time. And so he was willing to allow, and I provide Ms. Pollock a, a suggested conditional language to allow for surveillance cameras, and then to continue to work with the Amherst Police Department. Um, and, and frankly, if they come out, and I told Captain Ting this today, I said, you know, Gabe, if you say you need to have these um, on-site security. We'll have on-site security. And so he didn't think that was appropriate now, but in the future, should he want it, that's what's going to happen. And so as much as, you know, I, I think deference to the police department here is, is needed and it, it was what he suggested. So that was, that's kind of that last piece. I think that was, that was outstanding. So, you know, with that, we're happy to answer any questions uh, on any of this. Um, that's a little bit of a summary of what we've been up to. Mr. Reedy, I want to just run through a couple of quick things and we can get back to the just clarification clarifications. I read through the new uh, management plan addendum, a couple of new points. Uh, it says here that um, redwood construction or red, red tail multifamily land development, I'm not sure which, already manages uh, housing in Amherst. I was unaware of what that is. So your company already manages um, housing units in Amherst and which ones are those? Uh, for, for the record, uh, Tyler White, Redwood Construction, um, 2082 Michelson Drive in Irvine, California. Thank you, Mr. White. <clears throat> so our company uh, also manages a property called the Social Amherst. And that property is a student housing property um, located in the town. I believe that's the only one in Amherst that um, we manage. All right. Um, one of the things we discussed were additional bicycle racks. And in the management plan, it talks about, the supplement talks about two bicycle racks located in buildings 97 and 105. I seem to recall at our last meeting that the site plan included bicycle racks at each, in front of each building. Um, is my memory correct? That's that is correct. I I um yep. failed to, I failed to update that in the management okay. plan and, and, but, and can do that. And but you'd be governed by the site plan anyway. But that's I just wanted to make sure that I was I was remember yep. that correctly. Um. All right. So those are the kind of cleanups that I had on on the management plan, the supplement plan. Um, and I think you sat us for my, I was the one that raised the question about snow removal. Uh, and I think that you satisfied my concerns about that. Um, you've, I think you've done a good job with that. Couple, moving on to the other items. Um, so let's talk about the community gardens. Um, I know that the you had a conversation with um, Healthy Hampshire 
and just for clarification, we're not saying that Healthy Hampshire is the only one that you should talk to. We're using Healthy Hampshire as an example of a community of a community group that you could work with if you so chose to do so. Um, I think that the proposed condition, which is in the um, condition, I think it's condition 80 in the project application report, uh, condition 79, excuse me, lists several steps to take whether you work with Healthy Hampshire or not that are important for the design and, and success of the community garden. Um, I'd like to know if those are amenable to you and I would encourage you to continue to work with community groups to try to create, um, who have done a lot of work in town on community gardens, which is kind of an amorous thing. Um, community gardens are popular here and a lot of and several developments have them. I wonder if those conditions are, are um, you're copacetic with them. Yes, we we are. Great. Yep. Okay. Um, then let's. Then I think we need to. The one big issue that remains, um, uh, well, and EV EV sites as well. You, the new parking plan contains um, um, the EV site, so we don't need to to um, to condition that. I don't think separately, but the site plan requires that has it as well, and you have to live up with that. So let's let's talk about security, if we can. Um, originally, there was um, the original application. You bought this property under the, with the condition that there be a security guard, it be evaluated after a security guard on the weekends, it be evaluated after a certain amount of time, and then you could decide whether it would be there or not. You asked us to remove that provision. Uh, you subsequently sent, then said agreed to the provision, not asked us to remove it, and now you're coming back and saying ask us to remove it again. My problem with my problem all along with the security provision was that I felt that the, um, the the focus of the organization on the the number of police calls and the transparency and commitment to providing us with a fulsome um, presentation on security and police presence in the, was not sufficient for the first two meetings. And it, we had to go back to the police to get the calls. And there was, there's this, some of these calls are routine, some of these calls are real, but there's, you know, 200 calls within the time, 200 up, um, incidents of police presence on the property in the 18 months you own it. Your folks didn't think there was any police um, activity in the, or represented there was no police activity. That's the first thing. So I have, I am concerned about the management not being, not putting sufficient um, focus on the security concerns of the property. That's my first concern. My second one is that the Police have said that a that a combination of on-site presence, uh, additional uh, security cameras and other facilities, as well as improved management uh, tenant selection, is what's worked in other places. And they gave several examples. Mill Valley, your neighboring your neighboring property, had um, a, was represented to us in our meetings and discussions with the police as a problem property for a while until they did those all those in combination and they now find that it's a very valuable uh, a very much improved property and they found the same thing in several other places they don't say that it's just the lights they don't say that it's just the um captain ting didn't, doesn't say that in his in his letter to mr reedy either i think or is, is maybe his mem memorialization of your conversation i don't doesn't say it's one of those alone will do it but it's the combination of all of those and I kind of think that's right. Um, so my inclination in this, at this point is to require the on-site um, security from nine to six, seven days a week when you don't have other people there. Um, and if you wish to do other kinds of work, I think it would make sense to put in securities cameras and I, you're already doing more, it seems to me you're already have the ability to have more um, um, vigilant tenant selection, and that's up to your uh, your company to do that. Uh, you can do all that and come back to us at some point when you think that you don't need the additional security presence on board. We can you can enter you can make a motion or make an application to change the special permit to amend it. My inclination is to go with the security uh, presence from nine to three on seven days a week, and. Um, and see how that goes for a period of time. And then um, you can reevaluate it. And if it's a, appropriate, we can consider it as an amendment in the future. 
uh, to the uh, to the special permit. Can I respond to that, Mr. Chair? I I would expect you would, Mr. Reedy. <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, I guess a, a couple of things, and I can't obviously speak for for representations made or or not made in the first couple of meetings. I understand right. that there was an issue with the GIS system, and so that still, you know. I don't think excuses uh, uh, an ownership group from knowing what's happening on the ground. And so regardless of GIS working or not working, you know, Tyler and I have had the conversations and he totally understands where the issue is there. And I think it's a valid issue where I would say um, to require, you know, and I think one of the rubs is if we were to have on-site security from 9, uh, 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., seven days a week, and then we were to come back to you six months later and say, hey, we don't need it, look how quiet it is. I bet the board is gonna say, well, yeah, of course it's quiet, you've got security. So the discussion well, with Captain Tank today was why don't we start at the other end? And if there is issues, then we know we have to do something else. But if we start then, with yeah. kind of the hammer, so, and that's what I had said to him, I said, you know, do you want us to use the hammer right off the bat? Or he said, no, 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 you can work up to it. And I just, I'm sensitive to, deferring to the police. They're the professionals here. You know, you, you've got something in writing. We're not making it up. We didn't twist his arm. They said, start slow. And so to me, that's incumbent upon Renew. And, and I think they'd be fine. I'm talking a little bit out of turn, but I think they'd be fine coming back in, let's say three months and, and having a conversation. Because what I understand about this complex and part of my conversation with Captain Ting today, and it probably came up in previous hearings, it's not like a puffed in um, or a townhouse where you probably have college students and then you're talking about Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, something like that. This is, a, and if we were going to do it that way, you'd look for school breaks, you'd watch out for the summer, right? It's just a different, it's just a different calendar if it's really student-centric housing, which this is more purely multifamily than it is student-centric. And so I think if you give a three-month litmus test, you're going to get a real read on you know have they cleaned up their act and then after the three months you could do another three months like there, there's there's nothing preventing those check-ins um starting slow with surveillance and then having renew prove their worth and if they're not able to you know the expectation has been set and if they're not able to meet those expectations then the result is going to be having to pay private security for 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., seven days a week, which I'll tell you is very expensive. And so that's that's that would be our idea. That's what I talked about with Captain Ting today. And then even if it's you know weekly meetings between Renew and, and the police, I don't want to put unnecessary burdens on the police. I know that they're strapped for staff anyways. Um, but when get Captain Ting said that he talked to his patrolman, because now he said he's behind the desk, he, when he talked to the patrol officers, he said they don't really get, they haven't got called there very much was his, the way he represented it to me. So it would just be a request to the board to start slow, have a check-in period. And then, like I said, if, if they aren't meeting expectations, you know, let's have that conversation at that point, knowing that we just had this conversation. The problem with that is that then the, the burden is the initiative is with the applicant to come back and say, he wants to change the, um, the special permit to include um, a, a security guard. Let's do it the other way. Let's 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 keep the burden on the applicant to try to say everything is going well. I don't think I need it anymore. Let's uh, and and prove it to us that way. We lose our ability to to uh, adjust this if we give it to the applicant to to come and and start the process to to uh, have a security guard if that is needed. We lose our ability to do that because we can't start the process for amending the special permit that has to come from the the applicant and so unless there's a I, three month check-in would be the response yeah, but, right? but, uh, we, we're busy enough and the police are busy enough that i don't need to have i don't want to put three month check-ins three month check-ins on something that i think if you if if the applicant bought the property with the knowledge that there was going to be security guards Two at days one point they right but there was going to be some security guards um, from our view on this, we found that there was a hundred calls, whether well, 200 calls, a hundred of which were 
uh, not just the check-in with the police self-initiated, calls in 18 months. It's not, in, it's not insubstantial. And if that improves dramatically, and you can prove, and the, that can be proven to us, I think then we can come back and take a look at it. But I think that obligation now should reside upon the applicant and not upon us to start that process. Mr. Maxfield. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was just gonna, uh, one, say I, I'm still inclined to keep the security guard as well. For the reasons that you had mentioned, but I know prior in some of the, the public statements we received, from neighbors were, were issues with noise complaints that did have to go uh, to the police on this. And I do really wanna take the, the neighbors' uh, opinions into consideration on, on whether or not to have a security guard there. And I, I, unless any of those people uh, who had spoken previously about the, their desire to have the security guard are here to say, well, you know, we, we've, we've looked at what the applicant has put forward and, and we're okay with not having it. Unless anyone's here to say that, I'm, I'm inclined to keep the uh, security guard on as well. Are there other questions for the applicant, Ms. Marshall? I have a question for the applicant, but then also maybe a question for the, for the board. Um, first about the surveillance cameras, maybe a couple questions. Are they being watched in real time somewhere by somebody or are these just making recordings which might then be reviewed if necessary? And secondly, is there really only one entrance to each building? I'm sure there must be fire exits, but is, is one camera <laughs> per building adequate to um, see who's going in and out? So um, perhaps the applicant can answer that and then I'll, express my concern or an issue I have. Howard, do you want to talk about the structure of the buildings? <laughs> sure. So I, um, we would definitely need to, to chat uh, with the police department to kind of figure out the best way to monitor those security cameras. Um, and, you know, we're, we're open to um, to doing what they advise us to do. Um, so that's that's what I would kind of say to the to the first question. Um, and can would you mind repeating the, the second part of your question, please? Uh, oops, sorry. Um, what can I just make sure I understand? So you, when you're proposing surveillance cameras, you don't at this moment have an opinion about whether those are being viewed in real time or just taping? I mean, my sense would be is that they're they're taped. I think what Tyler is saying is, and I'm going to be pretty clear here, the financial burden of having on-site security seven days a week as this board is, is requesting is a big issue. And so if the alternative is to have, I would imagine some, you know, in discussion with the police, because I'm not convinced that the police want on-site security at this point, um, is to have live the surveillance cameras monitored live, that probably would be more economically feasible than having on-site security during those times. And so I think the, the hierarchy, the preference would be, Ms. Marshall would be record it. If there's an issue, let's check it, just like a typical security camera in most of the um, you know, residential complexes in Amherst. But if it's between the on-site and the live stream, so to speak, I think live stream far and away. And I, I mean, I, what I'm going to say also is, I have if if the requirement is going to be 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., I think we're going to frankly ask the board to continue the hearing because we have to reassess some things. I think I think Renew is going to have to take another look at some things because it is that great of a financial burden to do. Seven, seven days a week for those six hours. So, and I'm just, you know, I'm always honest with you guys. So that's yeah. that's really what we're looking at. Okay, thank you. The other part of the question was um, how many cameras per building? Is there really just one entrance? There might be multiple exits. So. Sure. So the language that we that we suggested and provided and um, today to Ms. Pollock was that we provide one camera per building. So that we would have, we would have um, 
a great view of the property from multiple angles and be able to uh, see all the entrances and, and exits that there are. So ha having multiple cameras spread out throughout the whole property um, should give us enough coverage um, to, to monitor the security. And I'd imagine, Ms. Marshall, if the police department said we need more for better coverage, then there's going to be more for better coverage. Sorry, Tyler, but I mean, I think that's right. That's the reality yeah, of it. I agree. Yep. Thank you. Um, and then my um, the thing I wanted just to to, to raise is that um, I'm like what whatever whatever the security program ends up being, I'm con I'm concerned that we don't seem to have, and I don't think anyone suggested, and I don't know if any other housing development has has these is some metrics for deciding what is what is what is the goal i mean you could say zero police calls would be certainly be a goal but i don't know if that's reasonable so you know what's too what's too much what's too little um i, I i'm concerned that um yeah we might be asking something that it for something that isn't defined. And so neither we nor the applicant can know if it's that condition has been met or not. So that's my concern right now. Thank you, Ms. Marshall. Are there other questions, comments from board members? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Maxfield. I mean, are we, just committed to that this has to be seven days a week for the security guard. It was already two days a week. So I think my concern still is going to be more for weekend days. I'm not necessarily uh, attached to the idea of having a security guard there Monday, Tuesday night, for example. Um, do we do we have flexibility on that or, or the, the rest of the board, if we're going this way, do they want to stay with seven days a week? Well, I, I don't know what the... I guess the question is, that's a question for all the board members, Mr. Maxfield, I'm not sure. I mean, I think the, the, the thing that I come away with from my discussions with Captain Ting and from his, his um, representations of other apartment complexes, for lack of a better term, is that it's the combination of all three things that work best. It's a combination of on-site security guards, combination of increased surveillance, and a combination of better tenant selection processes that's what seems to work best and it's not one or just one or two of those but it's all three that work the best and that's where they've seen the the um, improvement and i guess it's all it's it's about um starting out and then having the applicant come back and say you know we don't have any prop we we haven't had any use of the security guards monday tuesday night can we move to thursday friday saturday sunday nights I mean, I, that's the way I would, I would prefer to go that way. I would prefer to have them come back to us and say, you know, this hasn't been uh, needed that much. We've done this a good, a good job on this, and we'd like to move that, uh, amend that special permit to change the, the, uh, the coverage. But right now, there is nobody there. I mean, if we don't do this, there is nobody there between 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock the next morning. And that is... And that could be a problem. That it was not what they thought was going to happen to begin with. They'd at least have two nights worth of, of coverage. And I, I think that it's not unreasonable to ask for seven days a week coverage for those hours. And if it proves to be unreasonable, they come back and they can tell us um, on, based on their experience. And I think at that point, we'll have a better sense of what is the on property um, experience than we have right now, which we, which we don't have local representation here we Tyler is, is very good but he's in California and he's not the he's not the local he's, you're not on ground there Tyler you know I, I know that we don't have your resident manager here talking to us we don't have your facilities manager here talking to us so we don't really know I mean you're you try your best I'm sure you do but we don't have that local we don't have that local experience and that's what's that's one of the things we're looking for so we will have a better idea down the road and they will have a better idea down the road they can come back to us at that point and say it should, be, it should be changed. That's my feeling, Mr. Maxfield, but I'm open to, I, I want to hear from the rest of the board members too, either now or during the public meeting portion. And, and Mr. Judge, we do we do have a representative from our property management team, if that's all helpful 
uh, for the board to, to respond to any any questions that would be targeted at, at property management. Um, so that's Rachel Window, um, Maureen, if if anyone uh, needs to ask a question to, to Rachel. And what's Rachel's position, Mr. White? I'm sorry. Yeah, she's she's a regional property manager, and this this property is one of her um, assigned properties. But the regional property manager isn't nine to five on site, right? They're they're, they're there. She's there sometimes, but she's not there uh, Maureen, forty hours a can, week. Jimmy, Rachel, can you can you clarify kind of how often you're on site? Thanks, Tyler. Uh, yep, I'm on site roughly one time per week um, for one business day. If you want to know the exact hours, I can dig in and see. Um, but I do personally live about an hour away from the property. So I am the closest person to the site, apart from the actual manager who works on the site every day. Got it. Thank you. Ms. Parks. Um, I would be all right with a compromise of having a security guard Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Having lived in downtown Amherst, I know that's when the high activity is. Um, and so I would be okay with with that three days of the seven. What about Sunday? I don't notice it. I don't think it's necessary. Now, at Thursday, surprisingly, was is is almost as busy as Friday. Oh yeah. Ms. Marshall. Yeah, I don't. I don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. I think um, I'm not sure if Ms. Parks was also contemplating cameras, perhaps it is possible to do cameras and weekend um, security guard on site and review that after three months or six months and see if the guard is uh, not particularly busy or in fact quite busy and maybe should be there more often. I, it seems to me that seven days a week, that strikes me as, as burdensome. All right. Other comments from board members or other questions? This is really, we can discuss this more also in the, the public meeting portion of this, but um, other questions for, and we can continue on this now, of course, but other questions or other, other um, comments for the applicant before we go to public comment. Great. Maureen, do we have anybody, any members of the public who are, so I, let's, let's open this up to public comment um, in case there are, are any public uh, members who wish to speak to this. I don't yes. know if we have any. So if anyone wishes to speak, you'll have to um, use the raise your hand feature on Zoom to indicate you, you, you wish to speak. I'm seeing a couple hands, okay. Uh, yep. We'll start with, um clark um clark i'm gonna allow you to if you could state your name and your address sure hi it's clark bankert um and i live at 15 fairfield abbey stampton massachusetts i actually had a comment about the garden so i i wasn't sure if you're opening this for public comment for all the issues or just the specific yes you're talking about um, yep. any of the anything regarding this application Oh, okay. So would you like me to go to go ahead then? Yes, please. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, I just wanted to note a couple of things um, with regards to the community garden. I do work with Healthy Hampshire, um, which is a program of the Collaborative for Educational Services located in Northampton. And um, uh, just confirming that uh, Tyler and I have met and discussed the project um, my organization is interested in a partnership with Redwood uh, to develop a garden on the Renew property. Um, right now, uh, we are looking at um, where to find funding for that because my understanding from Tyler is that their timeline was to build a garden this spring. And so 
we are 100% uh, grant funded and we don't have any funding written in specifically for this project right now. Um, so we are interested in a partnership, um, but we don't actually know if we can commit at this point because we're, we need to secure some funding first. So that's kind of the, the status uh, of the uh, partnership at this point. Um, and um, I have uh, really two questions about the garden, uh, the proposed garden. So my understanding is that the ZBA has asked for design from Redwood. I did get to see it um, on the screen share with Tyler. Uh, typically, Healthy Hampshire's approach for working with communities is to gather a group of interested residents um, to, to actually work on, uh, on the design together um, and to solicit more, you know, as much community input as we can about their design preferences. And so um, one of my questions is, you know, for the ZBA really, like how much leeway, if we do end up uh, moving forward with a partnership with Redwood, and we do work on developing a garden um, this spring or sometime in the future, how much leeway will we have to modify the design that they have already submitted, you know, based on community feedback? So that's one question and should I pause or would you like me to just go through the other question before I? Uh... I, I think go through both of them, Okay, Ms. Banker. Um, and so then the second question is, um, I understand that the original permit included two gardens um, and that Redwood is proposing to build one garden at this point. Um, you know, from a community development perspective and sort of the model that we typically work with around gardens, starting with one really makes sense because we don't actually know the extent of community interest at this point. Um, however, if there is substantial interest that would merit a second garden, is there any way we can ensure that this would be supported in the future by Redwood? Is there a role for the ZBA? Could it be um, in the permit, but a time frame given like within five years based on demonstrated community interest? Um, just some way for us to, you know, if we do have success with that one garden and it, and there's demonstrated interest from residents, um, could we then, um, you know, continue to partner with Redwood if they're if they're interested to build a second garden, and could that be included in the permit, or is there some way to ensure that that could be made a possibility in the future? So that's the second question. Um, some of those questions. Well, let's um, well, we can have the applicant respond to that at the end of the um, public comment. We've got your questions now, and perhaps board members would also respond at the end for your public comment to those questions. Um, what's an, we have another request, Maureen, for a public comment, I think from Mr. Matthew uh, Barron. Yes, yep. Uh, Matthew, if you could state your name and your address. Good evening, my name is Matthew Barron. My address is 76 Barnstable Street in Swampscape, Massachusetts. Um, I'm a technical assistance provider for the Mass in Motion program, and one of the grantees does happen to be uh, Healthy Hampshire. I, too, have a question about the community gardens, and my question is just more related to um, what I saw as a potential inconsistency between the presentation from Attorney Reedy and the condition, so I was just looking for some clarification, whereas in the presentation, Attorney Reedy mentioned that all residents would use their own tools, but condition 79, which um, was agreed to um, verbally, um, required that um, Redwood purchase supplies for the community gardens. And so knowing that community garden members oftentimes do have shared tools, at least some of the larger and heavier ones, um, would condition 79 require there to be some common tools provided for the community gardens? Question. All right. Thank you, Mr. Um, Barron. Is there another? I see there's another request for public comment from uh, Ms. Moranny Parker. Um, Ranny, if you could. Hi, this is Ronnie Parker. Um, I garden in the um, community garden in Amherst that uh, 
Healthy Hampshire has helped develop with the town of Amherst. And um, I think that um, one of the important things about that garden is the way that Healthy Hampshire goes about gathering input and uh, sort of including all kinds of people. And the reason this is important for you all, I think, is that it's not just about food security and whatnot, all the great things about community gardens that we know, but it's also about a very different kind of community building that happens when people garden together. And that will contribute to greater security for you because more people will know each other and have seen each other and done things with each other. So I think that um, one garden or two gardens, um, if you could uh, find a way to work with Healthy Hampshire, I think that's a really good way to go. Um, I also had a similar comment to Clark that um, I think it's great to start with one garden because you don't want to like overdo it. Um, but I would really like to see um, some sort of system in place for monitoring or some point of assessment to determine how well it's working and how well it's not. And I know that there were some concerns, I'm not sure where I heard this about community gardens being ugly or not being well cared for. And I just wanted to say, because I've worked in, worked, been in community gardens and led them in where I lived before for over 10 years, there are just so many things you can do to beautify the area around the community garden that are not dependent on whether some portion of the garden gardeners are maintaining their garden or not. So I think that concern certainly can be alleviated if it's one and if it's known up front. So there's a lot that can be done and certainly Healthy Hampshire has experience with that. And I have found, um, anyway, so I would very much support having the garden. And I think it will be an asset to your um, potential tenants, not a problem. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Any other public comment? All right, this is an opportunity for um, the applicant to respond to the points made by the public. Um, we've got the, the first question about um, commitment to um, getting residential resident input and secondly about some kind of a mechanism to require an assessment as to whether a second garden is, is needed or would be worthwhile. A question about tools and then um, a general discussion about the value of, of um, the community garden. Sure. Well, I appreciate all of the public comment and um, definitely value the, the feedback that was given. Um, just to address some of some of the questions, um, uh, we are welcome, or we we welcome uh, input from from the local community and, and as, especially tenants at Renew Amherst to provide input, design input, and feedback on on how to best design and, and manage the garden. Um, that being said, we we do, and, and the reason that we requested only have one garden is we want to um gauge uh, the feedback um and test out whether or not uh, there's sufficient demand um to construct a second garden um if it is you know we're we're open to uh, input from tenants if there is um enough demand for a second garden um so that's something we're, we're definitely willing to 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 consider um in terms of the question about um, tools being provided, so the condition as suggested, actually it, it, it is a little vague. It does say purchase supplies for the community garden. Um, so we're happy to, um, so it's a little unclear exactly what supplies mean. Um, we're happy to provide seeds and um, places to, to, to put trash and rubbish um as is as, as illustrated on the site plan um you know the only reason in, that we talked about and I, and I think this question about tools came up before but the, you know tools undoubtedly end up being lost and misplaced and 
um, from a property management perspective, um, it just, from our perspective, can be easier for, for tenants to provide their own tools so they have ownership of those. Um, and so those tools don't, that are provided by, if tools were provided by management, don't, don't keep getting lost over and over again. Um, so that's, that's um, I guess, our response to that. In general, you know, we um, are happy to work with Healthy Hampshire or other community groups to um, design a great, a great garden and great management uh, policies and principles um, and think that, you know, with, with the community's help, with Healthy Hampshire's help, we can, um, we can um, have a great garden that, that's useful for everyone and that um, is, is beneficial and um, kind of mitigates any concerns we had with um, becoming unsightly and, and so forth. So that's, um, I think that's covered. If, if, if I miss anything, please let me know. Um, I would add one thing. I think one of the um, provisions of condition, of proposed condition 79 is former planning committee on on-site residents to help um, to manage um, the, the garden and sketch out a design for the community garden based on community feedback requirements and the owner's preferences. So I think the it seems to me that the involvement of the community is are is already required through the conditions that are proposed. Um, lastly, I'm not inclined to require a second garden five years down the road based on some kind of a metric that we don't know what it, what it is. Um, I think if I think this is the kind of thing that if it really takes off and does well, um, a, an enlightened management. We'll see it as an as a um, attractive uh, amenity for the complex, and I'm I'm not I don't know how we would put a metric in so much to Ms. Marshall's point to to um, evaluate whether there ought to be a second one at some trigger point down the road. Um, I see there's another hand up, but we we tend to keep public comment to one comment per person. Um, Ronnie, so we're not going to, Ms. Parker, we're not going to take a second comment unless it's to correct uh, absolute mistake on the part of the, uh, uh, either me or the staff or the, the applicant. Yeah. Other questions, are there any other comments for, regarding the public comments for the, uh, for the applicant from board members or any other comments from board members before we go into uh, the public meeting portion of our consideration. Ms. Marshall. Uh, just that I think we should clarify, and I'm not sure if it happens in the hearing or the meeting, what is meant by supplies. <laughs> you know, our supplies are not tools. Is it mulch? Is it topsoil? Is it, you know, just, just to make it clear what is included there and what is not included. We can do that when we consider the, the conditions. Okay. That would be the appropriate time to do that. Mr. Chair, if I could before, I don't know if there's any other comments on, on anything else, but before you do go into public meeting, I, I think what we would say is probably twofold. One, I can't help myself but but to, to note that uh, safety is always a big issue, just like noise or lights or water trespass, right? And you have been doing this long enough, the board has been doing this long enough to know that if there are concerns, folks show up to voice those concerns. And I think it's worth noting to the board that nobody has shown up to talk about feeling unsafe at the property. And while there may be uh, a number of police calls, and that may be frustrating, and in, in the board may be frustrated by representations, misrepresentations, lack of representations. I think we have to look at the, the testimony, or frankly, the lack thereof, with folks saying they feel unsafe. If, if folks came here and it was overwhelming that there was a sense of a lack of safety at the site, I think we, I, would have a very different conversation with Tyler and I'm sure he would have a very different conversation with you, but that's not what we're hearing. We're not hearing that people are saying they feel unsafe. 
and that they need on-site security. This seems to be somewhat unilaterally imposed by the Zoning Board of Appeals, even despite what, what the police department has said. And so with that, before you go into a public meeting, I think we would ask for a continuance because security on site is going to be a big deal and Renew is going to have to rethink you know, several things, including potentially the, the construction of this building altogether because it's that type of burden. So I just don't want you to, because I know how deliberations and findings and all of that go, and I want to be sensitive to your time. Let us go back, have a discussion, see where we really come out, um, and then come back. And if this is the one discrete issue that we're talking about, which it sounds like it would be, then we can have that discussion um, at, at that point. But I don't know where Renew is, frankly, on this. I know Tyler and I have been communicating, and I, I think the best thing to do right now is to, to request that continuation. Unless you want to go along with us, by all means, then you can you can proceed. But but short of that, which I'm not expecting right now, we would ask for a continuation. I sense that there are sufficient votes to require some amount of on-site presence uh, from the from the board members. Um, I'd have a question for you as to what the cost is for a per hour on a per hour basis of a security guard. I mean, the representation is that it's expensive. If you don't have that now and we do a continuation, it's something that we would want to know. If that's a, if that's a, you know, if it's twenty dollars an hour, fifteen dollars an hour, twenty five dollars an hour, that is something we should probably know. But um, I don't know how. I don't know the impact of that. What that decision is financially. That's your call. And if you choose, if, if if it's imposed and you choose not to build a building because of that, that's um, that's in, that should inform our decision, right? That should be something we think about. But I'd like to know what those numbers are. So, and we maybe Mr. Should... Judge, would would you mind if I clarified? Um, yep. I have I have done some some research on on the cost of hiring uh, security guards, and I think it can be anywhere in the neighborhood of forty to fifty dollars an hour. Um, and if you for six hours a day for 365 days a year, it's 80, 000, you said that's it'd be about $80,000. And so in that range, um, from a, from a financial perspective, um, you know, every dollar of expense for a multifamily owner, um, has a big impact on, on whether, uh, on informing the decisions of whether or not to, to build something. Um, so it not, so 80,000 to, I think if you, if it's $50 an hour, that's a hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, that's not only a burdensome expense every year, but also impacts the valuation of the building. Um, if any future sales are contemplated, then, um, those that's taken into consideration by any potential buyers and kind of hurts our position, um, from a valuation standpoint. So. That's just kind of all of the things that are going through our head when we're when we're making this decision is not only the the burden that it places on an, an annual basis, 80 to 100 thousand dollars a year, but also for uh, evaluation if any any sale is is going to move forward. Understood. Just two points. One, you bought this property with the condition that there'd be two or three nights worth of security guards. So the, the, it's the delta between whatever we decide and what was in the original condition. That's the first thing. And so I just wanna make sure that all the board understands that, but that was already there. Um, and and secondly, um, I'm that sounds like a high per hour number. I have no idea though. Um, it'd be good to know what that is. And lastly, you still got 97 or 96 bedrooms that you're gonna be uh, putting people in and the question is it's your question it's your decision to make whether the uh, 47 units would generate sufficient rent to offset that cost but um so i i guess we should i would unless other people have questions for the applicant or or want to discuss another provision that of some of the conditions i would suggest that we move to the public meeting portion discuss the uh, start out with discussing whether there is um, a desire to continue this or whether we should move forward with conditions and findings tonight 
uh, as a discussion amongst the board members. Agreed? Okay. We'll go to a public meeting portion, as which long is as, generally- if I could, As long as we're not closing the public hearing, right? Well, no, no, we're, okay. we're not closing a public hearing. Just to- nope. nope. Make sure. This is the portion where we're proceeding to a public meeting. We're not closing the public hearing. And if that public meeting is typically a point where the board discusses the application before us, uh, and it's generally not a time for public comment. We do reserve the right to get public comment or comment from the applicants for clarification. So I'd like to hear people's thoughts on where we stand currently. Number one, whether we want to continue with the app with the application going through conditions findings and others or whether we condition this and give the applicant a chance to come back and re um submits a different approach so i'd like to hear what people think mr maxfield your hand is up uh yeah do we want to um at least now get rid of uh everything else other than the uh the security guard issue it sounds like there's no more issue on that. We want to, like we did previously, vote on those conditions and just have that that last one hanging. So when we come back to that, that's the only thing we need to review. That's certainly a possibility. That would make a lot of sense. We could use the time tonight. But um, I guess the question is, do we do we do we continue the meeting um, generally? And we can figure out how we do that. But but I think that makes sense to you go might. through and. You know, my, my preference would be to, to take care of the just the, the last thing yep. that we can take care of tonight, get a general consensus of where we stand on seven days a week, four days a week, three, whatever it is, and then continue it and let uh let the applicant uh, go from there. That would be that would be my preference. I think the problem we can do that. We can do that through conditions. I don't think we can make findings at that point, either ten point three eight or the nine point two until we deal with the security. Yeah. So remaining conditions security con guard condition and um and it probably makes some clear away some deadwood before we but the question i have is do people want to grant a continuation or and give the, the applicant a chance to come back with a, another alternative or do, are we comfortable where we are and that's really a question for all of you my my feeling is it's best to give the applicant a chance to come back and propose something. Um, I think my, I've made my feelings known. I think people on the board have made their feelings known as well. Um, and we can, we could vote on it and see if they want to, if they want to take it or leave it, but it's probably makes sense not to have a, um, a fait accompli if we can avoid it, but I am not inclined to um, move from much of my concerns that I've stated. I'd like to hear from other folks about whether we do that. Ms. Parks, do you have a thought on that? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but we, we, we need to kind of get a sense of, of where people are on, on continuing um, before we move one way or the other, I think. I'm okay with continuing. I will say that uh, in Amherst, we don't really, most jobs do not pay $50 an hour of, of that sort. It's yeah. not, it's di different pay scale here. Uh, but I also just want to say that here we're very impacted by um, uh, student housing or you know issues with uh, densely populated apartments and so that's why we're very sensitive to this issue. Mr. Gilbert, do you have a thought on this? Yeah, I mean my quick thought is um, no the the security guard pay scale is not 50 an hour but I think that the um, you know the, the point remains that, you know, there is a concern amongst the board members for a security guard, right? I think that reasonably speaking, that is not a seven day a week um, ask from any of us. I think that's, you know, pretty clear from uh, from the discussion. I do feel as though, you know, uh, a three day a week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, as has been proposed, I believe, by Mrs. Parks is, you know, fairly reasonable. Um, that's something that, you know, I sort of agree with. Um, based on, you know, the complaints that have been received over the history of time. Um, I don't think that that's, you know, um, sort of an unreasonable ask. And, you know, I'd be happy to vote on that, um, you know, should the applicant uh, be amicable to that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that 
you know, they're not interested in returning yet again uh, to, to necessarily debate this, but of course it's, you know, a decision um, to be agreed upon by both sides here. Those are my thoughts. Ms. Marshall, do you have thoughts on this? Um, well, I, I already expressed some, um, uh, so whether we want to talk about three day a week guard plus surveillance cameras or just Mm -hmm. or not. But as for the continuing, I'm, un, I'm, un, I'm unclear. Is it that we want would want more information from the applicant about the cost of a guard or they want more time to consider? I mean, I'm fine continuing, but it's I don't know how we know if that's needed. I for is for them to reevaluate and come back with a proposal that they think meets our um, concerns. But once, we, that's once what, we've decided what? No, is, I mean, or? I think that they would come back. I think what they're asking and is they're asking for a continuance so they can reevaluate and come back with a proposal for us. Maybe that proposal would be three days a week with security cameras, yada, yada. I don't know, maybe that proposal, maybe that proposal will be what was originally proposed that there would be uh, security guards, uh, whatever. You know, I don't know what it, what it is, but that's what they are. Because part of that, we would like to know what the reasonable cost is. I mean, saying that it's outrageous or that it's expensive is one thing. Knowing what that cost really is, is another thing. And we can have a better sense of what that is in Amherst versus, um, I mean, an assertion that it's expensive and I don't doubt that there is some expense to it, but I don't know how big it is. So that's, that's what the uh, continuation would get us. Or we could proceed and we can say, you know, our judgment is X, Y, Z, take it or leave it. And if you don't like it, um, come back at some other date and time and tell us what you want or don't build the thing. I mean, that's not a very good option. That's sort of a data complete one way or the other. And I prefer not to do that. But um, what we don't want to do as a board is, um, be afraid to make a decision on the safety of residents of the area because of uh, concern that it might just based on on a question that the building won't be built without some more knowledge without more chance to try to reach a compromise here i don't want that none of us want that but at the same time we don't want to be um backed off from our responsibility to make sure that the application uh, addresses all the needs of the community and the residents. And I think that's what's important. So, um, I don't know quite how to proceed in this case, but what I'd like to do is um, put a test. What I, what I seem to look at is we've got four votes that continuing and having the applicant come back. I'm not sure, Mr. Gilbert, if you were in that vote or not, but I think there's four people, I include myself, allowing them to come back. That makes sense. I also would like to go through the rest of the conditions, not the findings, but the conditions, and get those out of the way so if and when they do come back, that's the only issue that's out there. And then, and then at that point, we make those, we can make a decision on security, we can make the findings, which the findings are dependent upon what all the conditions before we make the, the findings and we can move forward then at the next meeting. That would be my proposal to members of the board. Should we proceed that? Is there anybody that would object to that? If not, I'd like to proceed that way. Okay. So what we wanna do then is go through the conditions that have been proposed by staff um, many of them, but we have already taken care of a huge chunk of these conditions. Um, if you'll go to the project application report, you will note that every um, condition that we approved in a prior meeting is identified as with either an, a lowercase or uppercase okay at the beginning of the uh, condition. So, at, for example, the first one, we've already done that. Um, the second, we really can't do that until all of the um, plans are included, which in this case, 
may include additional security cameras or other things. So I'm not prepared to, this is kind of the final thing that identifies which site plan is actually, they have to build it by. I don't think that should be done until the very, until we have the end of the hearing. So I don't think we can do condition two at this point. Condition three, four, five, six, seven, and eight have already been approved. Under marketing and lease agreements, condition nine, And that's already been that's already been approved. Ten has been approved. Eleven has been approved. Twelve and thirteen have been approved. Fourteen has been approved. Um, Fifteen has not. Fifteen is new as of October. All right. This was this was this came up because of new information which we gathered, uh, which was made um, we became aware of at the last meeting, requiring some of the. Um, one of the units to be for affordable for houses earning 60% of area median as opposed to 80. Um, they, they quite frankly have to comply with this. So I would, I would argue that that has to be um, approved. Are there any objection to that or discussion? If not, 16 is done, 17, 18, 19, 20 are done, 21, 20. 23, 24, done. 27, 28, 29, 32, 33 are all taken care of. 34, 36, 37 are taken care of. 38, um, we've already talked about this. We have not voted on this condition yet. The applicant has agreed to it. It seems like that is a condition that we can approve at this point unless there's an objection from any member. Um, number 39, pretty much boilerplate language, normal sort of discretion giving to the building commissioner, uh, prove any minor changes to the parking layout needed to accommodate the placement of any vehicle charging station on the premises. We have it on the plan on the and modified. This gives the opportunity to, to make um, not significant changes, but minor changes to that. I think that flexibility is probably valuable. I do have one question. Um, we do not need to condition bikes in front of each building because the um, site plan already includes that. Am I correct? Marina, Rob? Um, there is a condition that sort of uh, mentions the various amenities uh, like benches and picnic tables mm -hmm. and perhaps the bike racks. Um, and um, I think we'll, we haven't reached that one yet. So, um, you could take a look at whether you think that needs to be included or not. But if the bike racks are on the are identified on the site plan, that's a the approved site plan, and I think they are, then they would have to be built according to the site plan. Is that yep. correct? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. The management plan is number forty. So forty one. Uh, that's a new all snow within the parking area should be promptly removed from the site as a part of the cleaning process. You know, I um, this probably occurs because of some concerns I had. I'm comfortable with the management, the amended management plan and the snow plan in that. I don't think we need this um, condition because I think it conflicts with the with what's in the uh, amended management plan. And so I would say we should remove this unless somebody objects. All right, 42, 43, 44, approved, 46 is approved, 47, all new on-site parking places will be constructed and maintained by the applicant and showed, as shown on approved, uh, approved LC 200 overall site plan dated October 6th. Um, and this is all, the second one is also parking. All right, so the one, um, that's just saying that it has to abide by the most recent um, site plan, I guess the only question there is, is that date still the most recent or does that date need to be changed? That is the most current one. That's the most current and that includes the um, 
the handicap, the EV, as well as the compact spaces. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that I think approved in the case, unless there is objection. I'm just reading, I'm reading 48. Yeah, I don't think there's any, there's no objection from the, and on that. Number 48, the, the parking spaces. So that should be approved unless there's objection. Mr. Reedy, I'm seeing your shake. Is that? No not, objection to that. No objection. Okay. Uh, 49. Okay, so we approve 48. 49, 50, 51, 52 are all approved already. 53, 54 are approved. 55, 56, 57, 58 are approved. 59, 60, 61, 63, 64, uh, up to 63 have been approved. 64 is up for discussion. Benches, bike racks, picnic tables, community garden, and trash bins shall be provided as shown on approved plan sheets. LC, okay, replaces modified language. All right. So what it says is that the, um, this says you got to build it to the plan. And that plan includes bike racks in front of every community garden, trash by trash bins, an increased number of picnic tables and re and increased number of benches. Is there any objection to that condition? If not, I think we should approve it. 65, 66, no, 65 has not been, um, 65 needs to be, con be considered. This goes back to the 9.22, finding that we have to make let's put a circle around this but then and that we have to go up requires we have to make a finding to go above 35 percent there is um they want to go to 35.2 this gives them a little extra 35.3 i don't think this is controversial it has to be done for the for the um um the building to be built and the additional parking uh is what requires that but it's part it's it, ties into a finding so let's keep 65 just in case we make a we have to make a finding that we uh, are not anticipating or amend, amend the finding so maureen that's one that will keep over 66 has been found uh, been i mean been um uh, 67 68 69 70 71 have all been approved 72 uh the staff recommends that this um be removed as condition one covers this i don't think it has to be repeated i think the staff is right here um, same thing with 73 um condition this, the building should be constructed along the design sheets that that are the most current 74 it deals with the maximum number of visitors per unit are 10 people with a maximum stay of five consecutive nights i guess the question there is what's in the lease and is this is this that you currently have, and is that, are we comfortable with 10 people per apartment building, or par, per apartment in the, uh, as visitors in the apartment, in the site? So number one, is this in the lease, Mr. White, or Mr. Reedy? Yes, this is in the lease. Okay. Mr. So that's, Turner, can I ask? I'm yeah, sorry. Yes, yes, Ms. Marshall, go ahead. If, if unit, if unit means an apartment. Yeah. Uh, 10 people overnight i mean uh, overnight visitors that's 10 additional people in one apartment that has no more than three bedrooms this doesn't even seem like would anyone try to do that <laughs> this the is only not, thing i can no this is not like a party it's not visitors right. this is overnight visitors in one apartment 10 people for five nights at, the only thing I can say on this, I, I have I, initially I had the same response. To it, to this seems out, you know, uh, way too big. The only thing I can think of is that this is trying to accommodate perhaps families coming to visit. That if you have, remember, we do, these aren't just students. We have we have families living here too. You may have family members coming to visit for holidays or graduations or something for a short period of time. It, I'm guessing that's what it was, but we should leave that. I, I shouldn't put my characterization on that we should ask the management <laughs> what they were thinking of when they and i'll um i will do that now 
instead of imposing my thoughts on it. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. The, uh, this is this is actually a condition of the currently approved special permit to add this language to the management plan and the lease. So that's where those numbers came from. So condition that, 24 of the 2018 special permit has new language shall be added to the management plan and lease agreement, limiting the stay of guests to five days and a maximum of 10 guests per unit, unless otherwise approved by management. So this, this comes from, you know, four years ago. Well, Ms. Marshall. I can't imagine that um, would be a problem. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't, you, go, you can't imagine that it would be a problem? Well, that, that, that someone would wish to have more than 10 people for more than five oh, minutes. Oh, I see. So, yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just, what, I didn't what know do other people think? I mean, it, no, you, you thought about it. It seems like a lot. And it doesn't seem like something that the management is, is, um, um, is pushing. I mean, it, it seemed that they'd be open. What would you, what would you prefer? What's in, what do you, 10 people's a lot for one bedroom or two bedroom apartment, even if it is family. What's your inclination on this, Mr. White or Mr. Reed? Um, is Rachel still on? Maybe she can um, add some input here, if that's okay. Yeah. Maureen, I'm not, I'm not seeing her. Um... Hold on one second. Maybe she became an attendee again. Hold on. No, she's not there. Um, is she still? No. She might have left, actually. Left. Let me go through that one more time. Well, let's not delay this. Let's do this. Come. Um, we will leave this on. You're coming back. We'll leave this unsaid. Come to us with that you are comfortable with uh, next time we meet. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Dylan yep. Maxfield has raised his hand, I, I thought. Oh yeah. I, I was I was just gonna say I I'm I'm fine with 10 people. I don't I don't think that's a problem. I could see in the event of a large family, like now now they're up against the lease because they because all they can afford is a, a smaller apartment. Like I, I don't know. It's not I don't think it's a problem. It's five consecutive nights, maybe around Christmas time. It's not the worst. Um, but I'm not married to it either. I, I just I don't see it as a problem. Okay. Well, I think you're not opposed to having them come back if it, with a number they're comfortable with, are you? Okay. No, let's do I'm that. Not issue with that either. So leave 74 something you'll come back with when you come back. All right. 75 is taken care of. Six is approved. 77 is approved. 78 security guard. We'll leave that for, for later. 79 shall that's the community gardens um you've verbally approved uh, agreed to that is there anybody that opposes or what uh miss marsh if you do to the definition of supplies it looks like uh, maureen has already <laughs> written some new language in there purchase seeds Seeds, I think, I, I I, don't know. I think people would, seeds are cheap mm -hmm. and people have, yeah. you know, want particular varieties. I was thinking more of, um, you know, mulch, like for the paths. Yeah. But, um, I mean, but I think, what I think of here is I'm sensitive to the need for, um, that some, that people living in apartments don't always have shovels and other kinds of things that you would need to, to till the land it may not be something that's available to them um and others may that this may be tools may be something down the line that the community is going to ask the the um, ownership the management to provide them and try to figure out some way that they can keep them from walking off from getting lost um, but that's probably something we should leave up to management to do and not not say that this not not um, compel them to 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 put tools on this list. I guess I would also want to make sure that there are um, supplies include um, uh, sprinkler heads for the hoses so that people can water and they don't need to bring their own watering can and those kinds of things. And I'm assuming that that is what's contemplated by these supplies. Um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the kind of thing that you need everybody bring their own sprinkler down to the community garden and bring it back. But that would be something that's on the end of each of each hose. Am I correct? Yeah, can I add to that? Um, yeah. in our in our site plan, uh, it's currently proposed that we pipe water to the community garden. Um, yep. and so there would be water right there at the garden. Right. How that water gets to each plot. If, if there's a if there's a spigot that you turn on and you fill up your your um spring can, that's one thing. If there's a hole put that over and, and uh, use that thing that you have to decide based upon what the community is asking you and okay. potential all right potential yep. and the price for that is to not have to buy hand, buy shovels or <laughs> need to do that later but that's a good trade it's in for you it, it seems in my uh, estimation yeah that's, but that's keep fine. it open for what the community wants and that's uh, that would also make um, I think the one thing I would like to stress here that we've talked about, if you just go up, Maureen, a little bit to, I think it's number, it's C. Um, yep, C and um, a planning committee of residents, community partners, if you choose to work with somebody uh, in the community and allowing the community to design the um, garden really makes sense. It's something that we are um, committed to. And we put it here for, well, I think will help to ensure the success of the community garden. I want, want to just highlight that uh, for you guys. Okay. Any objections to number 79 as amended? I would just note that seeds is repeated in H and is that necessary? You're good, Ms. Marshall. Um, seed seedlings, I mean, I would take it, you know what I would do? I take it out of supply. It's, seeds aren't so much supplies as um, in H. I take it out of E and leave what there in H. And I would say purchase supplies such then those are trash detectable mulch. That's what I would do. How's that? That meets your needs, Ms. Marshall. All right, good enough. Any other changes to? All right, 80. All on site residents in the premises still have access to two community rooms located in the new 47 unit building. I do have a question up for the, for the management on this. Um, if you have key cards that only allow you into the building that you live in, how are residents going to be able to access the community rooms in the new building are they do they have a, a separate entrance an outside entrance or what do you how is that going to work no uh, that's a good question um i would have to defer to to property management on that one and if rachel is still not on the call i can definitely uh, get an answer on that all right so let's one of the things we will discuss when you come back is number 80. But um, it would be valuable to figure out a way to provide everybody in the, the, the amenities of the community rooms, not just the people in the new building. And before issuance of the building permit, the applicant will submit an updated LC402, which is drainage and utility plan associated with stormwater management report to the town, Amherst Town Engineer for review and approval. The approved plan and report shall be filed with the planning staff. That just has to be done. So we should without objection. Okay. Um, We've gone Marshall. through, I think. Ms. Marshall, yes. We went, I was, uh, took me a while to catch up at the beginning. Could we go back to nine, condition nine for a moment? Because I just don't, I don't understand what happened. Condition nine. It said, it's about the leases. It says, okay but then there's the staff review language and then it says that the applicant wishes to modify it so i don't recall that that we just did we reach a decision and i'm just forgetting that we said no no change it's going they're going to be 12 month leases without exception um, 
I'm trying to remember that this seems like a long time ago, Ms. Marshall, doesn't it? Yes. Well, I think it was a long time ago, but <laughs> but I do remember there was a there was Rob, was there some discussion about why 12 months is pre is preferred or is kind of standard practice in um, in these apartment complexes in Amherst? Is that do I recall that? I, I remember us talking about it, but I also I also think we agreed that you know a little bit of flexibility for um, you know situations that we can't think of you know in, in a condition wouldn't be um, you know would be okay to have built in there. Um, but I could I couldn't think of any anything else right now other than it has been a standard condition that both the planning board and zoning board has been using in, in a number of their permits. We see it uh, pretty, pretty uh, regularly, common. Don't we? Uh, yeah, regularly. That's right. Yeah. So it didn't it, it didn't strike me right away as a problem, but um, as the uh, last sentence of the view, which is the the applicant's proposed um, modification expected to be 12 months, however leases less than 12s may be approved by the applicant as circumstances require. There's not much of a um, guideline there for the applicant as except what's required, but it does speak, if, if all the leases in the building are three and six months, you're not being, 12 months aren't being expected. So I guess there's some, um, there's, there's some yardstick against which to judge your, uh, judgment on circumstances requiring it to be less. What do people think? I would I would move that we amend nine to incorporate the applicant's suggested modification to number nine. What do people think? If there's I no objection, no objection, we'll do that. All right. Okay, so any other questions, any other proposed conditions or any concerns that members have regarding the condition that they want us as part of the conditions? All right, then uh, discussion earlier, we have gone through all the conditions with, uh, I think three or four. Um, one can't be done till the end, one deals with security and one want to do at um, a, a later point when we have more information that they're going to get back to us on. Um, now is the time to decide whether we want to um, continue it so later uh, for them to come back as request or whether we want to forge ahead. So I would entertain a motion to um, continue this meeting. Maureen? Let's see here. So I believe the next DBA meeting would be on Thanksgiving, so we're probably not no. doing that. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> not happening. So then, then the following one would be December eighth. Okay, now that's that's a problem for me. Eighth, I think. Is, I, mean, I could. Is there a chance people keep earlier in the on the fifth? It's, I'm just not. I may not be able, I, but I can do it on the 8th for family reasons. So um, the 5th, the 6th, or the 12th, or the the 15th would work. But this, the 8th, 7th, 8th just are not going to work for me. I cannot commit to it working for me. I don't know for sure, but I cannot commit. So, um, oh, yeah, and then the, the, what dates would work for you, Steve? Sorry. Five would work. Six would work. 12, 13, 14 would work, 15 would work, and 16 would work. Mm. Uh, it, it, yeah, and then... Um... I don't think anybody wants to meet on Thursday before Christmas. Maybe, maybe you do. Yeah, probably not. But. Would we meet on the 15th? Just have one meeting then in December? Does that work for you, Tom and Tyler? 
for sure. About, Dylan, you serve on other town boards. Will that work for you? Yeah, that'd be no problem for me. Um, I, I think we can, if I have to make it that uh, my board of licensing meeting is a little short that day, I've got no complaints with that. <laughs> All right. Well, there might be a few. Um, anyway, and Mr. Gilbert, how about you? That work for you? The 15th? Yeah, I think the 15th is all clear for me. How about you, Ms. Parks? That's good. All right. So I'm sorry to put everybody through this. I just cannot commit to be, I can't promise I'd be there on the, on the 8th. So, so um, the 15th. May I ask, so since the applicant seems to want to provide updated materials, uh, is there a, um, a deadline for submitting that for the in preparation of the 15th of December? Well, tenth, I think December first would be a good date. That's three. That's two weeks to one, two, three weeks to put your materials together. I can't imagine that it's going to take you that long to do it. Yep, that works great. All right, and that way we have materials ahead of time that we can look at. All right. Okay. So it's so, continued until December fifteenth at six o'clock via Zoom. Right? Via Zoom, yep. and that the materials. Understood materials to us by December by December first, Mr. Maxfield. Uh, Mr. Chair, before we we make that motion, do we want to make the motion to approve the uh, conditions that we reviewed here tonight, as well as the amendment to Condition Nine? Well, I kind of went through. I mean, we I kind of went through and said, unless there's an objection, we've approved those each of those. Um, okay, so I think I did it. Formally do it then. <laughs> Wonderful. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good with I that. I think we did it. Yep, I think we did it. Another vote. I just don't. I was trying to avoid votes, but making sure that we had unanimous. Um, and we will. And we will at the end approve all the conditions. We will satisfy the need for a roll call vote on all the conditions. So okay. going forward, this is a, a, a step in. The all right. Okay. So I would take a motion to um, continue this per the request of the applicant to the fifteenth at six o'clock. Um, and that the applicant, the deadline for materials submitted was December 1st. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Is there any discussion? <laughs> All right. The motion, it's a roll call vote. The motion occurred, the vote occurred on the motion. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. Motion uh, votes unanimous. The motion carries. We'll see you guys on the 15th. Perfect. Thanks, Thanks you. a lot. Right. Have a good Thanksgiving. You yep. Too. You too. Thanks. Maureen and Rob, stick around if you can. Sure. Do we do we still need to adjourn? No, um, we're not we're not ready to adjourn yet. Um, oh, yeah. But I just I just talked to Maureen and Rob afterwards. So um, we've dealt with all the applications before us. The next order of business is uh, public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. So this opens up. This is every meeting we allow comments on anything that the public wants to talk about, except for those matters before the board. So is there anybody who wishes to speak? Not seeing. Not okay. Then there's um, no public comment. The last is responses from um, any any non any business that was not notified prior to the 48 hours. I have two quick things. Report on the uh, fees that we talked about. We're trying to get those done on by middle of October. Uh, we come up with an agreement with the planning board of a $500 fee, with exceptions for uh, single family homes. Um, that's with the planning department. I've talked to Maureen and she's, she knows that we were trying to get this done. There's, uh, I would encourage Maureen if I need to, I should, I'll talk to Chris that we're looking to get their reaction. We don't have the reaction from the planning department yet. That's not Maureen's fault. <laughs> I've, I've been bugging her about it and it's not, uh, not her fault. So, um, it's still in the process. I hope to have it for our next meeting on the 15th. Um, the, the planning department's response. That's the first thing. So I wanted to give you that uh, update. We have gotten about it. We did what we were supposed to do and we just need some reaction from the staff uh, at the planning department. 
Secondly, there is, go ahead, Ms. Marshall. Is that something we will need to vote on or is yes. it just a report? Yep. Okay. So it's a, we need to vote on it because it's an amendment to our bylaws. Those fees are set forth in our bylaws. So we could do it without that. We could do this without the planning department's comments if we just felt we wanted to do it, but my, if we could. Um, but my inclination is to see if there's an objection to it before we move ahead. But I don't want to wait too long because we're missing income that could otherwise be coming in to the town. So um, I'd like to have that in December present for the town. We'll, we'll give them some additional revenue as Christmas present. First thing. Second thing is I understand that the that the, we had a discussion about um, a change in the zoning bylaws regarding food. A couple of weeks, several several meetings ago. Can you hear me? Yeah, you cut out there for a moment. All right, now can you hear me? Uh, technically, yes. <laughs> now you can hear me? Yeah. Technically, okay, good. yes. Technically, yes. Well, I, they, I've got to get new earphones down on me, but I can still hear myself. Um, we Several months ago, we had a discussion with Rob and on changes to the zoning bylaw regarding um, food and liquor establishments. The effect of the change is to change the current bylaw, provide that um, certain, re certain restaurants downtown that are uh, in the business district, I think, general business district, would go for site plan approval rather than special permits. The thought being that this has been done administratively last two years successfully and it hasn't involved a special permit and that the inclination uh, that the that most cases those restaurants in that area that, that do not serve after 11 30 at night and who have food or liquor uh, or drive-in uh, you know, windows those um, uh, a nuisance to residents except for people who live in the large apartment buildings right downtown who decided to rent there where that was probably something they, they knew was there when they rented and probably an amenity they like is having rest, restaurants around. Restaurants that are larger than 250 people, restaurants that go after, I think, uh, after 11.30 at night or, or open or nightclubs, nightclubs, not dance halls. There's something, there's like three things, nightclubs, bars, and um, music like the, like the um, the Drake or nightclubs such as the one in the by the parking lot in back where you get the good Dylan, I saw you with the food, the jerk chicken, right? The, the ha Hazel's Blue Lagoon with yeah. the, uh, the great Hazel's jerk Blue chicken. Lagoon. Those would still require a special permit. I think I'm describing this correctly. Am I not, Maureen? You are in, in a general sense. I, I know there's been some updates. Uh, 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 my colleague, Nate Malloy is working on this draft proposal and there's been, you know, tweaks along the way as he's been meeting with both the planning board and the, the CRC. Um, so I, I can't really speak to the particulars of, of the draft bylaw, to be honest, but um, I do know that there are opportunities to attend future planning board and CRC meetings. Um, and I believe uh, the planning department does hope to um, have this go forth uh, to the town council for public hearings and for a, a, a final vote by the end of this calendar year as article 14 does expire at the end of this calendar year. But I and I can certainly email everyone um, what is the current draft uh, version and let you know the particular date that the next time either the planning board or CRC takes this up. I, I don't have that information in front of me though, but I can email that to you. Oh, we can't hear you, Steve. We can't hear you. Ah. Sarah, uh, Sarah, you had something to say. Yeah, <laughs> maybe more, more can answer it. I'm curious what the impact, if any, on the ZBA's work is. Is this going to move some things out of special permits that we would ordinarily be doing, or this is just informing us about changes to the Oh, uh, I think that's... Code? Yeah, some of the uses would actually be uh, by site plan review through the planning board. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but again, I, I don't really want to speak to the particulars a, until I have the draft proposal in front of me, but there would be definitely um, some of the uses would, uh, would uh, go through the ZBA such as nightclubs and, um, and then a restaurant or bar that is over a certain capacity. Um, but again, I, I'll email you the current draft bylaw so you can take a look. Now can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How many choices do I have to get a microphone on this? <laughs> it's too complicated. The fact, my point was, one, you're right, it does change the kinds of things we had done in the past. We haven't done for three years, right? And it's function, arguably it's functioned well without us doing this because it's in the commercial district and it isn't the kind of thing that we really have to be concerned about typically and let the planning board or the staff deal with it. That's the argument. It does it now. I'm not one who just wants to give up our sort of jurisdictional areas. So what I wanted to do is make sure that this was you were aware of this, get the staff to try to distribute it to all of you to look at it, assess what it is. If you're concerned about it, let Maureen know. She can then communicate that to me because we can't talk about this individually. <laughs> we have to go through staff. Let Maureen know that if you have a concern. She'll she can then compile those concerns and we can either have a meeting before or we can represent ourselves at the, the town council if it's something we really are concerned about. My my judgment on this is that it's not, um, that it's probably stuff that we, we don't need to be approving um, special permits for restaurants on Prospect, on, on Pleasant next to the large apartment complexes. I'm not sure that that's the best use of our time, but that's up to you guys to kind of take a look at and decide. So. Take a look at it. Let us know your thoughts. I just learned about. I just learned that the the um, schedule is fairly quick on this. I just I didn't know that until recently. So when you get this, look at it quickly and let Maureen know what your concerns are, and then we'll decide whether we should, whether I should or we should represent some, our opinions to the board. Okay, town council. I mean. All right, um, and you can certainly ask Nate if you have questions about it. Call Nate up too as well he, he's the guy that's doing this right Maureen? yeah and I, i'm emailing him right now uh so i don't forget so i can get the draft um bylaw and presentation and let you know when the next meeting will occur right and of course everything is on um youtube so um i can find out when what was the last meeting and you can watch that if you wish but i think the crc committee is dealing with this fairly soon so take a look at it if you're concerned uh, let us know whether we should express our concern about it. All right, so we, um, I think that's it. Is there any other old business? Yes, Ms. Parks. We have a training coming up next week, right? Yeah. Right. Just to remind people next Thursday. Yes, thank you. That's good. Yeah. Um, is that all that's on the agenda? Can we add anything to the agenda at this point? Such uh, as this, just got this item here to put on, um, we can always uh, have it on new business. I would say, um, let me talk to Rob. I, I, I feel like the solar training could be lengthy, to be honest. Um, so no. it, it might be a bit too much, but um, I'll, I'll talk to Rob on Monday because town hall is closed tomorrow. Um, I think it, the planning board is attending too. I believe, yeah, they are. It's unclear of whether they will have quorum or not. Um, so, um, so I did send a special invitation to pl the planning board and to the solar work solar bylaw working group. Um, so the town is currently drafting uh, a bylaw um, section uh, pertaining to solar permitting. Um, so they've been invited. Um, if they both those boards or any boards do have quorum, they'll have to post their agenda. Um, and um, there may be some procedural things that we need to think about with uh, Steve um, about the, like the if the, the planning board did have quorum, I think Doug would actually have to formally open the planning board meeting at, at the next Thursday. I've never dealt with that before, but perhaps perhaps um, some members could just tune in um, um, 
afterwards or, or, or what have you. Um, it is recorded and it will be uh, featured on the town's YouTube channel for uh, under the ZBA uh, YouTube channel. Dave, will there be material that we have in, in advance? That's a good question. Um, I will, um, I did ask uh, Jonathan Murray, uh, attorney Jonathan Murray to send um, any uh, materials in advance if possible so we can distribute it and put it on the town calendar for any members of the public that would like to see the presentation in advance or, or any other materials. So I'll touch base with him um, and um, hopefully uh, get you anything in advance by Tuesday. Okay. Thank you. So we all get to see each other next week after not seeing each other for a month, a month and a half. Um, that's good. All right. Uh, any other old business or any new business? Any other items for discussion? All right, guys. Um, good to see you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It is not debatable. The vote occurs on the motion to adjourn. Chair votes aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you all. Bye. Next week.